bitch. All right. Gentlemen, I've got a rush game for you on White Pass. We are defending, and I'd like to give you my first opinions or criticisms of this map before I dive into the specific commentary. And that will begin with the first game that I played on this White Pass. Obviously, it's not a new map, it's just a new game mode, but I was absolutely livid. I thought, why is this map so asinine? Why is this so foolish? And I, I was livid, I was atrociously offended, and I was ferociously angry. It was kind of out of hand, just because the first game that I played on White Pass, we were defending. And to be blunt and to be brief, it is extremely difficult to defend this map, okay? Extremely difficult. The advantage lies in the hands of the attacking team, without a doubt, and that's plainly because four of the six objectives on this map are destructible via Destruction 2.0. And obviously Destruction 2.0 is where you can just break a building down or a structure down on an objective and destroy it that way instead of setting charges on it, which you can also do, but Destruction 2.0 is a much easier way of destroying an objective compared to arming charges and so by that by that token the defending team is really at a disadvantage compared to the attacking team and another thing that contributes to the defensive disadvantage is that the spawn of the attacking team and the objectives of the defending team are very very close to each other so for example if you're playing on a map like Atomica Desert or Erica Harbor or Arika Harbor if you like to call it that you're gonna take a good 20 minutes, that's an exaggeration, but you're gonna be running, sprinting for a good three to four minutes to run from your spawn to the objectives, okay? But in this specific map, it might take you 20 to 30 seconds to run from your spawn to the objectives, so there's not much of a gap between the spawn and the objectives of the attacking and defending teams. So really, that brings an onslaught of attacking players very, very early on in the match, and there really is never really a break in the action. Like, for example, on Atomica Desert, you might fight off a wave of enemies, and then they kind of fall back, and then they have to run and assemble themselves, and then come back up for a second push, but right here, it's constant. Uh, on White Pass, it's constant. There's always enemies, they're always there just because their spawn is so close, so... Those are the two major things that contribute to the defense having a disadvantage. And the final thing is that if you lose your first two objectives or this first set of objectives here that we are currently on, you're basically done because the final four objectives are the ones that are able to be destroyed via Destruction 2.0. So really, if you lose this first set, to be blunt, you're toast, okay? You're toast. And to dive in this into the... Derp to derp. I'm trying to speak, but it's quite early in the morning. It's 3 a.m., and I'm doing the best that I can. But to dive into the specific commentary, you're going to want to lock down a flank if uh, you really want to be successful in this map, simply because, and I do get killed here by a wonderful M60. Uh, but you're going to want to lock down either the left or the right flank, have one squad on each, that usually works well, and then just have the rest of your team just stacked. Just stacked in that warehouse, hoping that you can pull it off. And that's mostly because the main roadway towards the warehouse is very open, there's no cover, so oftentimes you won't have a lot of enemies running straight towards the objective. A lot of them flank around and try to shoot your teammates in the back but those flanks are very very deadly and those need to be watched quite well but uh, it's for you to be successful and really once once those flanks started getting kinda tight and there was a lot of a lot of enemies there's a lot of frequency of enemies we decided just to stack in the warehouse and that is just just sit in the warehouse shoot anybody that comes in it's kind of a campy type style but if it gets the job done so be it I mean the defensive side has put it such a, such a significant disadvantage. You really have to do whatever you can to pull out the win. And really here, I was sitting in the corner because, uh, not because I'm a little girl, not because I'm, I'm scared to go out into the big bad world and get shot, but specifically we're just watching opposite walls. Obviously you can see all the 
teammates in front of me, directly in front of me, are watching the walls that are just below me, and then I'm watching the ones below them, because the enemies really, they don't always tend to enter this warehouse via the front of it, they oftentimes enter the sides, and I'm just covering corners that they can't see. Now as you can see, I do have a lot of my teammates directly in front of me, right next to the objective labeled A. And a real problem with that is that oftentimes the attacking team can really combat this quite easily. And the strategy that I actually use on the attacking side, obviously I'm not attacking now, but I just roll in with half of my team using shotguns, whether it be Segas or 870 MCSs or you name it. Some kind of a shotgun, something that's really going to dominate any other assault rifle or any other gun close range. And then I have other guys shooting in Mark Carl Gustav's M2s towards the objective because they have gigantic splash damage. So really, you're just keeping the enemy at bay with RPGs, and then your other teammates roll in with shotguns and arm the objective. And the other team really didn't take advantage of this, and somehow my teammates were able to stay alive in that small box that's really surrounding the objective. And I, I do admire that quite a bit, and it, it's quite remarkable that they actually managed to survive just because so many snipers on the attacking team flank around on the right side and tend to just take pot shots at them and pull off a lot of kills. And really, if you fire an RPG into that box or that... And when I refer to this box, I'm just talking about the room that contains so many of my teammates and the objective. They're just stacking themselves in there. Hopefully you guys aren't tired of me using the word stacking. I know it's quite asinine that I would say stacking that many times in commentary, but... And... I came back outside because I didn't want to be a victim of all those RPGs and all that sniper fire. I just wanted to avoid it. And I was just guarding the flanks. And here you can see as it's flashing on my, as it's flashing on my screen, it says victory is near, make the last push. And that's obviously indicating that the enemy team has less than 20 tickets. So we're really pulling it out here. And as you can see ahead of me, look at this guy. Take note of his name. His name is Big Red, or I think it's, yeah, it's Big Red Alligator. I almost said Red Big Alligator. That doesn't make any sense, but he is one of the main reasons why we won this match, just because he revived, it was absolutely ridiculous how many people he revived. He was like a Superman of revival with defibrillators. It was, it's quite remarkable, and he actually revived me quite a bit, which I'm very, very thankful for. I actually played with him a few matches after this, and he is, he is quite the medic, and really, I think that's another element as to, or strategy as to why we actually won this match, is because we had so many medics, and I'm going to say the word again, here we go, stacked in the warehouse, that, that if one ever died, he would just get revived right away, and if that guy died, revival right away, and really, that's one specific strategy that is very, very, very effective and very deadly is having not too many medics, but having a large frequency of medics that just keep reviving each other. And so really you have a constant presence of firepower around an objective that's very dangerous because obviously the most or the time in which an objective is most vulnerable is when you don't have any teammates around it, obviously, but this medic strategy really helped quite a bit and as you see I just died right there and then Big Red Alligator revived me once again and he's he and he along with all the other medics that we had on our team really contributed to our win and I'm very very happy with this just because this is the first time that I have won on the defensive side playing this map and before I go I'd just like to ask any of you guys to play on PS3 and consider yourselves to be effective Battlefield Bad Company 2 players to Go ahead and send me an invite or a friend request. I'd be more than happy to accept it because I don't have a whole lot of people to play with on PS3 or PSN because a lot of the friends that I have play on Xbox. But if you want to play some Battlefield Back Company 2 with me, feel free to send me a friend request or a squad invite, whatever the case may be. I want to play with you guys on PS3. But until next time, guys, I want to thank you for watching, and I will see you later.